Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week, we're going to look at a skill that I think that every bass player should have in their box of tricks, and that's bass setup. Specifically, truss rod adjustment. At some point, we all run into problems with how our bass is set up. We find some frets buzz while some don't, the action feels too high, we get tuning issues. Well, setting the truss rod and relief of the neck is the foundation that we build on in a setup. You have to get that right first before doing anything with the action or intonation because it has a direct effect on each one. You could get the string height and intonation just how you want it, but then if the relief of the neck changes, it all changes. You might have noticed that your bass can start giving you different problems based on the weather. Your string height or action might become higher or lower depending on whether it's hot or cold. So you might find that it feels different in summer or winter months. And sudden changes can be really noticeable. You might move from an air-conditioned room onto an outdoor stage on a hot sunny day and find the bass action and tuning just going crazy. Now this is because of how the heat affects the wood and the neck and this is where the truss rod comes in. We adjust the truss rod to compensate. Now don't worry if you don't know anything about the truss rod or even what it is, I'll be explaining all of that in a second. Truss rod adjustment is one of those areas of bass setup that many players shy away from because you always hear all the warnings and horror stories about how you can break your bass. Now I know that that was a big worry for me for years but let me put your mind at ease. Adjusting a truss rod is a little like tuning your strings. Yes, if you were to tighten them and tighten them and tighten them, they'd eventually snap. Conversely, if you loosen them and loosen them, they'll fall off. These are just huge extremes. As long as you're sensible and you don't sit there just tightening and tightening the truss rod, you should be fine. I've found that learning how to adjust that truss rod has been massively useful. I don't have to rely on trips to a luthier or repairman for basic setups and by experimenting over the years I've got to know the relief that works for me. I can make small adjustments when needed on the fly which is really handy on gigs and I can retain a certain consistency to the feel of the bass. But probably the most important thing is just understanding what relief is and what the truss rod actually does. You learn how each part of a setup is reliant on the other parts and how the string height is not just affected by the saddle height, the relief can make a huge difference and that's why you have to get that right first. So to get you started with all of this, I'm going to provide you with a clip from the Basic Fundamentals course over at TalkingBass.net. It's a huge course containing over 12 hours of lessons covering pretty much everything you need as a solid foundation for your bass playing. If you're interested in developing your all-round skills and knowledge as a bass player, I definitely advise you to check that out. Just follow the link in the info below. In the meantime, this clip is taken from the complete bass setup lesson in Module 3, so enjoy! Now first of all we want to check and set up the relief of the neck using the truss rod. Now the truss rod is a steel rod inside the neck that runs down the whole length of it from the headstock up here down to where the neck meets the body. And uh, remember that most bass and guitar necks are made of wood and wood is susceptible to all kinds of problems uh, involving heat and moisture and so on. So as well as all those kind of external problems, we've also got the issue of the strings being attached up here at the headstock and coming down here to the bridge. And when we tighten up the strings, that's going to add extra stress on the neck as it pulls it forward. So a truss rod is used to counteract all those problems and set the neck straight. So you'll see a little nut up here at the, uh, up at the headstock or down at the base of the neck. And you can turn that nut with an Allen key or wrench uh, to either tighten or loosen the truss rod and uh, bend the neck the amount that you want. So just think, necks are likely to bend backwards or forwards, you know, for one, to, one of a bunch of reasons, and the truss rod counteracts that bend. The neck can bow either forwards or backwards, so there's either going to be a dip or a rise in the neck centered somewhere around this middle area here, around the seventh or eighth fret. Now, of course, in between the two extremes, we could also have a perfectly flat neck. And some people like to have a flat neck, but the most common setup is to have a little bow or relief. Now, uh, this is because of the way strings vibrate. If you look at the vibration of a string after you pluck it, the, uh, the shape is going to be elliptical. So the vibration is, is much wider in this middle area than it is at the two ends at the headstock and the, uh, and the bridge. Now obviously that means that we have a chance of getting more fret buzz and rattle in that middle area. So for that reason we want a little relief or up bow in the neck to allow for that extra movement. The harder that we pluck the string, 
the more vibration. So players that pluck really hard are going to need more relief than someone that plays really lightly. Different players have different styles and preferences, you know, in the feel of the bass. So uh, setting the relief up perfectly, uh, perfectly for yourself can often take experience and experimentation. Um, you can try with a normal amount of relief and see how it feels, then try it with a straight neck, see how that feels. You'll eventually get to know exactly what works for you. The one thing that we don't want is back bow. Now, this is bow in the opposite direction, pushing the neck up in this area towards the string. So we have this little rise in the middle. And of course, that's gonna go completely against the shape of the string vibration, uh, which is vibrating more in the middle. And so we're gonna get a lot more fret buzz there if that happens, so we don't want back bow. Uh, some players, like I say, might like a straight neck, um, some players are probably going to want more relief, you know, like I say, the harder you pluck, you're going to want more relief so that it dips down more in the middle, but you're never going to want back bow. A really simple way to check the relief on the neck is to just hold down a note at the first fret of the A string there, and then take the elbow of the other arm, and then just hold down at the end of the neck there at the final fret, so you're pushing down so that the string's down, and uh, then use either the first finger or the thumb of this hand to push down around the eighth fret. And when you do that, you should have a little bit of movement, okay? So you should have enough that you could slide, so it needs to have enough gap there that you could probably slide a credit card in. Now, if, if there's too much movement, like if there's a huge gap there, that means you've got too much, uh, too much relief and you'll have to adjust the truss rod to bring it back a little bit. If the string is touching the fret there, if there's no gap, that means we've got back bow and you're going to have to alter the truss rod to give you a little bit more relief. Um, let's say that you were having problems with your bass and it was buzzing all the time and then you did this, you know, did the check and you found that it didn't move, you know, there was no gap there between the string and the fret when you pushed down. That would be, you know, indicative of the problem that you've got. It means that you've got back bow and it's pushing up there in the middle. So you just need to adjust the truss rod Either way, if, if you've got too much uh, relief, adjust it to have less. And obviously, if, you, if you've got back bow, adjust the truss rod to give you a bit more relief. So now we've measured the uh, neck relief, we can adjust the truss rod. And to do this, we need to find the truss rod adjustment nut or screw. And this is going to be either up here at the headstock or down here at the body. Now, uh, you can see on this Fender Jazz that there's a truss rod opening right there up at the headstock. Now, sometimes there's going to be a little cover on there, screwed on, that you need to open up to gain access. But uh, this one's just sticking out there, so that's easy. Now, on some bases, you'll need to take the neck, uh, neck off the body to find the adjustment. And in that instance, you're going to have to take all the strings off and unscrew the neck. And that can be a bit of a nuisance, but it's worth it for improving the uh, playability. So when you find the truss rod adjustment, you're going to have to see whether you're going to need Allen wrenches, Allen keys, or uh, a screwdriver, if it's a screw. And then you've just got to find the right uh, size for it. So uh, I've got the correct size here for this one, so I know that that's going to fit nice and snug in there. And um, just, you know, you need a set of Allen keys and you're going to need a set of screwdrivers for this. So if you don't have any, you'll need to buy some. Before we adjust the truss rod, it's important to loosen off the strings and get rid of all the tension in the neck. And it also helps to gain access to that truss rod. So um, I've, I've loosened off the strings here and just moved them out of the way. Uh, so now we can just insert that, uh, the Allen key in there. So if I put that just in there. And uh, we just need to turn it the correct way for adjusting that bow in the neck. Now, if there was too much relief in the neck and the, uh, you know, the, there was too big a space when we did the check, uh, then we're going to have to tighten the truss rod. And to do that, we turn clockwise. If there was too much back bow, as in too small a gap, if the, if, you know, if the strings were touching when we did the test, then we're going to have to loosen it and we're going to have to turn it anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So um, too much gap, tighten it up. Too little gap, loosen it off. So tighten clockwise, loosen counterclockwise. So quite simple. Now, I had a problem when I first started doing this in that I used to turn it based on looking up there. I'd always be turning it like this. So I thought of clockwise as turning it that way, as in, you know, round there, looking up. But I was wrong. You ha actually have to measure this from looking down the neck from the headstock. So to tighten it, we turn clockwise so as I'm stood here, turning it this way, okay? So 
Let's say that this was uh, that I needed uh, a little less relief in the neck. I would tighten it up, so I would turn it clockwise. And you only want to turn it a small amount. You know, a small amount goes a long way. If you were to just keep tightening it up and tightening it up, eventually you'd snap the neck. So that's where the problems come into play and the and the worry that you get. But if you do it just a little bit, then you're not going to have any uh, any problems. One thing that you can do is begin by just loosening it off quite a lot. If you were to keep loosening it off and loosening it off, then eventually the little screw there would pop out, and uh, you'd have to, you know you'd have to reassemble the whole thing. Uh, but uh, just as in turn, you know, it's it's very similar to uh, tightening up your strings. You know, tuning up. If you were to tighten them too much, you'd snap the strings. If you loosen them off too much, they fall off. Um, so. You just have to, you know, tighten up a small amount, just a, you know, a quarter of a turn at the most. Uh, if you know that there's a huge gap in there, yes, you can turn it about half a turn. But um, yeah, I just turn a little bit and then put the strings back on, tighten everything up, tune up again, and then just wait a little while, let it settle, and then just check the uh, check the relief again to see how it's uh, been altered. If it's still not enough and you still need to tighten up a little bit more, go through the same process. So take the strings, uh, loosen them off, tighten it up a little bit more, put them all back, check again. Uh, obviously, if there was too much back bow at the start, so too small a gap, then you're going to have to uh, loosen it off. So for that, you know, you turn counterclockwise, and uh, again, just a quarter of a turn or half a turn at the t at the most. Then check it go through the same process. So it's a it's a very simple process, you know, experimenting. You do it a little bit, you know, put it back, check it little bit more and it can take a while to do this it's not just a oh turn it done it's not like that you have to try it a little bit at a time until you get it right and that's why I say exper uh, experimentation and experience with this is really really important because um, you know you'll get to know how much you need to turn and also how much relief there is in there in the first place so uh, so yeah this is where uh, going to a luthier is really good because they'll instantly know and they can measure things a lot more accurately but you know, just as a very basic, rough way of doing it, this should be okay, okay? So now I've restrung and I've tuned up and I can check the relief again and that feels fine. And uh, you might also notice that the action's a little bit lower and better distributed along the neck and uh, you might not have a big dip in the middle that you might have had before. Uh, but it always pays to leave the truss rod a while, you know, for, even for a few days before doing any big adjustments again because uh, sometimes the neck changes a little over the day or night and then you find that you have to ease it back a little, you know, after that first, uh, that first um, adjustment. Um, but, you know, just leave it for a couple of days, see how the bass takes to it and then you can just do another adjustment if you need to. So, as I mentioned before, this clip is taken from the Basic Fundamentals course over at TalkingBass.net. The complete setup lesson also takes you through action, intonation and pickup setup. Then in some of the other lessons in the course, you'll learn about technique development, music theory, bass tone, including loads of tips on effects. Then you'll learn some of the basics like string changing and tuning. There's a bunch of tips on reading music, learning songs, playing in a band and how to practice. And I also get into some slightly more advanced techniques like slapping, harmonics, ghost notes, hammer-ons and slides. So a massive range of topics all in that one step-by-step -step course. So, if you're interested in any of that good stuff, just check out the link below or on screen and I'll see you later.